All right, ladies and gentlemen, traders, welcome back to another Relentless Recap. Guys, as you're tuning in, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And of course, if you're a new viewer, consider subscribing to the channel. All right, consider subscribing to the channel. So yesterday, small red day, you know, today's day three of Trader Rehab. And this is our second green day. But so far, uh, mission success for these last three days. You know, one of the main things about, you know, sizing down and really just trying to focus on the basics is to, you know, keep yourself in check and not be super red. You know, that's, that in itself is a big part of the battle and to immediately reduce the losses that you're seeing uh, so that you can have that longevity and prolong lifespan of your account. And, you know, I wanna always stress to the team here that, you know, even the best traders can find themselves going through a bit of a funk, a bit of a rough patch. And sometimes you got to do what's necessary to ensure success. Even if it means taking that step back, sizing down to get that major comeback going forward. All right. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about today's trading. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the patterns that we saw, some of the edges. We're going to talk a little, a little bit about the risk as well. And of course, we're going to talk about the hyper scalping strategy here as we go forward. So before we really get, get into it, just remember, guys, that day trading is risky business. A lot of people are having a hard time. A lot of people are struggling. So if you're someone who, you know, is newer to the market or even if you've been around, you've downloaded the Robin Hoods, you've dabbled in the past. If you're not consistently hitting your marks, if you're not consistently raking in gains. You know, in, it, you, you have to be careful and you have to reduce your risk. You can do that by using the paper trading simulators that are out there. That's what I did in the beginning of my career. You can utilize risk money, money that if you lose it, it does not affect your lifestyle. It does not affect your, you know, your mental state of mind. Keep those things in mind if you're now starting out or if you're just not quite where you need to be in terms of experience. All right. Remember, other than that, that I do not invest money for my subscribers. I never have, I never will. I will never message you first randomly for no reason. All right, so stay safe out there. And lastly, remember never to copy trade. You know, the strategy takes months, more commonly years to learn, all right? So with that being said, let's jump into the recap. We traded today two symbols, LIDR and NVAX. Those were the top two that we traded today. and. You know, it wasn't a bad day. It was a pretty quick day, really, uh, coming in. The goal was to be patient. The goal was to be disciplined. Hey, try not to start super red in earlies. And if we can see momentum, we can look forward to being a little more aggressive, hitting that buy button and, you know, watching for, uh, watching to keep a tight risk, right? So in terms of the hyper scalping strategy, you know, we're always going to be very proactive with being in and out. You know, the moment the stock is not going, we want to be out. And we faced a lot of challenges in the last couple of days simply because of the volatility of which some of these stocks were moving. You know, us looking to be in, but by the moment we're in, the price that we think we're getting filled is not the actually is not the actual price that we are filled. And the volatility is just so wild that we're taking losses, we're getting those fills on the ask. Just brutal for higher share size, especially if you get caught in the wrong areas. Uh, you know, including a few flushes, right? Because even when things are going well, it's already difficult, much less when you get caught in a few flushes. So for context, LIDR, this one started out in after hours yesterday, pushed up from about, you know, 125 area all the way up there to 199, pulled back into the open today and then slowly curled up. And initially, you know, initially I, I started watching at it here uh, as we were pulling back and looking for a move through VWAP, which did end up, you know, working out a little bit for me uh, on the very first candlestick, but we didn't really continue through here. And that, you know, that wasn't really great. Let's see, we had shares that went through at 63, 62, and we were selling 61, 64, 63. So, you know, it wasn't really a great move up. We had 68 for the highs. But before that, we did get a small one minute candle breakout, which led to the initial move. So watching for the ranks and repeat right here, 
but VWAP initially paid, uh, proved to be too much resistance. When we did get above the level, we did see a decent move up to 180. But again, you know, the move through VWAP itself was good initially right here. Nice move up. And this is where I gave back profits because sometimes when we break through with confidence, we held up the level here this first time. Once we start to pull back here, you know, I'm expecting this thing to hold and continue trending up. Instead, it's a false breakout. And we're right back down. Just disappointing type of, you know, act, price action here. But other than that, once we held up these lows, you know, we had our range. And key areas like this, if you're, if you're not switching away to something else, could be good, right? Bottoming wicks, a ton of bottoming wicks, really. And we do break out over the view off level. Sometimes these areas can be tricky, but, you know, if we can continue to hold, we can get a shot. But if you're in for a couple of minutes at a time, it can definitely shake you out, right? If I'm quick scalping in, out, okay, cool. But if you're in for long, this can definitely get you right back out. When we start to come back down, you know, even here, you think it looks good and then it's right back down. I mean, this can just make you say, hey, I'm done with this thing. But, you know, then it, it, does, it does continue. Slow grinds, slow grinds, and then squeezes over 182. And it rips up to a high of 223. From there, we get another brutal candle. And I right here, I already left out for the rest of the day. Like in this area, I left. But a brutal candlestick here. And then curls up later. Just kind of tricky um, in, in, in the aspects of the false breakout. So this stock, unlike some of the other stocks that we were seeing a few days ago, the bids didn't really drop out as much um in terms of like predictable areas and then on top of that the volatility wasn't as bad so it made things a little bit smoother now i was out for lunch and i ended up missing this move here so this you know is part of the deal if you're not here hey you're not here right slow grind not really opening up a ton and i, I you know it, it makes you it's a little tricky i wonder if anybody really caught this because e even if you thought there was something coming, you know, I mean, I guess it was high of day, so it would have been worth trying. And that's what really happened for most people is that a lot of times you're not really looking to make a certain amount when it comes to just this type of candle. Like in terms of the expectations, you might say, hey, we're slow grinding. Maybe if we get up over 40 to 50, we can go to 65. You know, nobody's expecting 323, you know, a minute later, right, out of a, re a resumption. So it's like you're buying for 10 cent breakout, 15 cent breakout, and the stock just goes up 70 cents and you're rewarded for just, you know, looking for that opportunity. I was not here, so I didn't stand a chance of getting this trade. You know, you got to be present. And it does look pretty bullish, to be honest. I mean, yes, we pulled back a little bit, but, you know, this looks good to watch at on Monday. If, it's, if the chart remains sideways like this and we can open up above 250, 260 on Monday, I think there's a chance this tries again. For three dollars so we'll see how, how well it does in after hours and then pre-market uh over these next two or three days lidr but again you know i'm always looking to keep a tight stop break or bail whether high or low on the breakouts on the dips and i want to be in and uh very active around the areas where we can potentially give the move right where we can capitulate whether uh, a bounce or a breakout that's LIDR. Moving on to NVAX. NVAX, I had a little bit of a better uh, run with this one. Uh, I mean, beautiful pre-market chart, right? Beautiful pre-market chart from 550s all the way up there to 14. Coming into the open, we're pulling back. And I was hoping for the red to green. I'm like, hey, if we go lower than these lows, I'm not super interested. If this thing comes all the way down here, I'm not interested. So I was hoping we could hold up, you know, the low VWAP area that we were consolidating against in pre-market. So said, so done. You know what? It did open up right in this area. And I tried, I tried throwing out trades here. I did capture, I think, one good trade or two good trades in here. I think I caught like two good trades in here. 
We did have a loss as well, too. Let's see, in at 66. Average out right here was 83. So I was sold, I sold half a little too soon. But then we got 83 on the rest of it, which was a, a much better trade. Did we capture anything here? In at 97, 10, 97, 10, and then 20. Out at 84. Oh, 3, 4. So this looks like it might have been a winning trade. The other two a little harder to say down here. NVAX early. A little tricky. The one minute candle did make the new high over 10. If we come back to 33 on the log. Let's see. These trades are all showing 32. So this is a 97 out of 84. 35 so i kind of missed the red to green here looking away well that does happen so from 10 we got to 10 53 yeah that was a little disappointing so it looks like i missed the red to green then came back a little later and you know these candles like this are huge man it this it did end as a red candle but at the time break of 10 ripping to 10 50 break of 10 is usually break of the whole dollar is usually an area that could be a little bit more obvious let's say in terms of where to be in right so not good to miss this type of trade here i like that i did attempt some entries at the lows uh, but it looks like once i got caught for the um false breakout i kind of shifted my focus and the other stock i was green 70 bucks where you know here i probably could have made three four hundred on this breakout so opportunity costed me there part of the deal 35 where we had the incline and back over 53 coming back to 35 let's see 9 35 a.m that is how did we do so we're, we start okay i remember taking a ton of trades around this 30 area because the stock did seem pretty active like it wanted to go for the breakout but notice a thousand shares you know not really going super heavy with size we ultimately got 40 i mean we tried a lot here between 35 and 45, we kind of missed out a little bit. But back in 42, scratch trade there. We finally got a good trade in at 49, out at 57, right? In at 49, out at 57. And so we're watching to see the push through 60 at this point. But it started struggling, right? It started struggling. Goodness. It started struggling. And Big Steve is trying to tell me to clean my nose on screen. Big Steve, brother. Shout out to Dash. Shout out to Big Steve, by the way. Yeah, this thing, you know, ended up needing to, to pull back. And so this is where I decided to get a little bit more aggressive. Because you know what? This thing was conforming to my thesis. Which was, hey, we just had a bit of churn. High 30s, mid 40s. And it did spend some time here right why not watch to see if we do retest that level if we hold this could be a good sign so high of 45 we pull back we pull back hold on 35 36 i think before we went down to 23 we held 45 and that encouraged me to size up right here so i'm in at 45 out at 57 great trade in at 61 out at 66 but i'm gonna get caught i believe did this pull back right away? Good trades here in at 62 out of 72. Things got a little congested at 80 for a little bit, around 39. But it did push up here to 91. And this is where I started to look to really, like, actually capitalize for real. Because I'm like, man, this thing does not look like it wants to pull back. So I started getting aggressive around 39 for break of 11. But, so sad, the pullback actually came right there. Despite all the indications that I thought we had for this thing to continue without giving that pullback, the pullback is going to come. And you can see my average here ended up being 1036. So let's look at look at uh, the dip on the way down. Coming back to, hold on, com coming back to the log, 
you know, just trying tighter stops, trying to see if we can get that break of 11, hunting for that break of 11. Notice it wasn't going size back down, smaller trades. The first big dip I'm in, I think I should have went down to a thousand shares here, but I'm in at 59. It doesn't bounce. I'm out at 54. Small loss, not bad relative to the move up, right? Try it again, 44, small loss, not bad relative to the good trades we had going up. But this is where I got caught, right here. I thought we were good. And you got to really be careful with these dips, I tell you, man. The dips can be the death of you. Because, and this is, this is, it's also an issue when a stock just goes up like this, like, when we go and go and go and go, it becomes difficult to determine where the dip is. But because the five minute candle was so aggressive and the volume profile looked so attractive, I thought the dip should hold. And it did. But it pulled back all the way down to 987 from a high of 11. There's no way I would have stood a chance. And it's why I went from green to red. So, you know, it was a little disappointing. It was just a little disappointing to see. Let's see, how much was I up before this red candle? Yeah, nice 340, you know, small trades going up. And I think I might have been red slightly. Let's see. Because I thought I would have been up more than that, to be honest. So, did I catch the one minute candle make a new high? Oh, it looks like I did. Thousand shares. It's really uh, aggressive here. Rips up to 30. There's 42. I mean, 42 to then 32 on the bid. It's not great. But well, we're going to get a little something there. 10 cents. Perhaps I could have been back in quicker because we see 47 and 50. Sometimes they're moving fast, man. But yeah, so we made money on the upside. Okay, so we made money. I think we, okay, we lost money here. Let's see. We lost on this dip. The pre-market high was around 10.17 or so. This is me trying to buy for the pre-market high right here. And it immediately comes down despite there being a bid at that level so this is how i go from green to flat again taking losing trades tried 97 84. i think that second attempt was a little too much being the high, being that the high of the candlestick was 50. it's like i should avoid that trade really and truly there's no reason to still try to buy the dip even you know down there gotta not take that trade man gotta not take that trade but yeah, we get back green and then on the dip, watch these trades on this dip to the gallows. Got to, you know, I mean, this, this is just, hmm, just a little frustrating to see that I could have avoided this loss, that second loss. And right here, it's like a, you know, smaller size, I think, you know, coming down to a thousand shares could have been good. You know, again, context, I did, I think I did watch 53. But, you know, it's also a level that we didn't really prove that we held. But even if I had something lower, it wouldn't have mattered. It just went lower and lower and lower. I mean, red 183. So even when I started to make back money, I had to dig my way out of 183 to then get back green. And then you can see, like, the churn in here, you know from green to red unrealized and just you know a mess thinking we thinking we're gonna hold up nicely it comes down a little bit getting back in trying again a bit of a battle here losing there again just you can see all the churn like just so much churn. like it had opportunity but i was a little too inaccurate getting caught Finally, building a little something here and watching for the move over 50. Do we get the push through 50 eventually here? We do. And I made, I made a little money here through 50. Trying again. 
throwing out a lot of scalps for the push. Scratch straight there. And I'm back in here because it just wasn't dipping and looking like we could continue up. So I did have some good trades where I could have like, you know, did better if we pulled away more. Like if this pulls away to 75, we do way better there. But, you know, this is the right attitude. This is the right mindset. Like, I don't feel any sort of way mentally. Like, I mean, I feel great. I feel great. I'm in a great situation. I'm in a great position. You know, I know what it is. I've been here so many times before. It just feels like another day in the office. So when we check out my trade review stats, just a little bit of red to wake me up, man. Just a little bit of red so that the short sellers can feel good about themselves. You know, let them have a little party right now. And then, and then it'll be back to business. This has been the uh, calendar I have to import for today. So with today's green day, we're going to at least bring down the uh, red by a good amount. And it's really just two red days that we've had. Which, you know, again, part of why I'm not even like bothered or worried in the slight less. In, in the slightest, the main thing for me was just making sure that the momentum, you know, wasn't going to con continue and persist with this crazy volatility to where I'm getting caught on higher fills, buying and getting filled in an area that I didn't expect to get filled and that throwing off my risk and being like a repeated cycle. Friday, flat day, you know, red to green day, back to red, unfortunately. What was red about two, three hundred, and then get caught in a $2,200 loss in a second. If not, this is a flat day, you know. Brings down the deficit here by half or almost, especially with a day like today. And it would have just been Monday, and Monday was one of those days where I was super aggressive. You know, swinging, swinging bigger size and just getting brutalized by the volatility. You know, getting caught in some trades. Six thousand share position there. You know, we took we took a couple of bigger positions. We got caught in a flush with bigger size. I mean, stuff like that. So, yeah, we're feeling pretty good. We feel good about where we are. I think if, if the month can persist with some hotter days, uh, in terms of, like, volatility being right, I, I think, you know, next week we get back where we need to be and then we finish out strong. Uh, but, yeah. So far, it's been a good year. Let's come to the detailed section. It's been a good year so far. Right now, we're looking to just stay consistent, stay steady, keep pushing, stay disciplined, and uh, we will prevail. We will prevail. My holding time, losing trades, 21 seconds. Yeah, and, you know, this is another thing, like, you know, we got to make sure. It's not, in fact, actually, I think this might be because of a halt, the halt we got caught in. Um, but another thing is, though, for this month is that we have to... We got caught in a 15 minute halt one time. So that skewed this metric. Uh, but yeah, we got to um, we gotta continue to cut our losses very quickly and uh, stay sharp. All right. But yeah, with that being said, stay safe, stay green. I'll catch you guys next time. We're going to look to push up the accuracy next week. Do not obsess over the, do not obsess over trading throughout the weekend. You know, continue to stay diligent, continue to stay patient. Um, and, you know, trading is this field where it's good to detach. As much as we love to do it and, and want to come back right away, detach, enjoy the, the time with family, friends, the other business, the other job, whatever project you're doing, maybe something around the house, right? Maybe your, your garden outside, whatever it is. You know, enjoy the time and then come back later. Come back feeling refreshed, study up when you have time. And uh, that's the key, right? So that being said, check out those links down below. Check out the links for the Discord, right? Which is our chat room. 
the discord is our chat room a little slow right now it is friday things have been a little slower you can see triad is actually in the gym you know getting it done getting it done so yeah check out the relentless trading uh chat room this is where it goes down um before the live stream during the live stream and after the live stream right this is where we hang out uh and yeah uh other than that Mo momo pro right which is the scanning software that we use every day you guys can feel free to check it out coupon code relentless for 25 percent off for six months this is where i get my watch list every day does now include halt scanners which is really good i know a lot of people do like that and then lastly you guys can check out merciless markets if you're interested in becoming a course member if you want to learn this hyper scalping strategy that we're, we're trading here every day not only myself but also marcelo tim uh triad you know feel free to check us out right feel free to check us out and let me show you guys something by the way right let me let me log in because i can log in as as if i am a student let me log in do i have access still oh i have to grant myself that well actually this is good enough i have to grant myself access to um the diamond again but yeah let me show you guys something right you know tim here's tim right here now you can come and check out to see how tim did on every single day even if i might have had a, a, a day where i struggled that doesn't mean that the other mentors had a day where they struggled, right? We know that trading is a very fine line. So if you say, man, LIDR, you know, I want to see how Tim did on this particular day. You can come in here and, you know, you can listen in and see what Tim is doing, right? We can bump up the HD, of course. Get the quality up there, 1080p. Turn on the volume. That rocket ship right there. After earning some sort of merger agreement, too, I think so. Something like that. Something, yeah. Uh, one point four billion dollar investment. That's what it is. So, yeah, you know, if I want to come back and watch Tim see exactly what how Tim traded, this is right here waiting for me. You know, likewise, likewise with um, you know, a triad. Right. Likewise with Triad. If I want to come back, if I want to come back and see how Triad did, you know, I can come in here, log in, see what he traded, you know, up 184. Uh, and, you know, as we mentioned, you get a different perspective. You know, myself, Triad, not as aggressive as Marcelo and Tim. Right. So you get to see it in four different angles and Triad also utilizing more of the charts. Right. So, you know, if even if I had a slow day or a rough patch, I mean, look every day here, try out, you know, doing well, right? I mean, steady numbers. Can't argue with these numbers, man. So yeah, you know, check them out. If you want to have everything, you can you, you can get Diamond, which includes every single thing that we offer, and you can utilize coupon code Miami. All right. So of course, this is in honor of the next day trading meetup that we'll be doing, and it's gonna be a good time. If you guys have not checked us out already, I'm going to upload the vlog this weekend. You know, there's a vlog uh, from Vegas that I'm going to upload this weekend from Marcelo's channel. But yeah, you know, it, it's been a great time. Every every time we hang out with the guys, every time we hang out together, it's always a fun, fun time. I mean, we, we have a blast. Um, in fact, we can go all the way back to the... Uh, we can go all the way back to the New Jersey meetup, right? We can go all the way back to the New Jersey meetup. Yeah, this is you know, shout out to uh, shout out to our editor, um, Kitty. Who, who did this video but this was the very first meetup that we had so long ago man i mean you guys can come check this stuff out right i mean this is this is what it, this is what it is i mean it's it's cool you know it's chilled you see uh myself crispy drew i think marcelo was recording at this time but yeah <laughs> so hit that thumbs up guys um you know one of you guys will will get lucky and win a free trip with us where we pay for your flight and your stay 
uh, it's going to be a good time, right? It's going to be a good time. We're going to spin the wheel once again and see who wins. Shout out to Will. Shout out to um, George, right? Jorge, the, the people who have won so far. Someone else will be coming next time. All right, guys. Stay safe. Stay green. It's been Relentless Trader. And I'm out like salt. 30-minute recap. My goodness. Wow. Later.